Welcome to MarcusG.TV. I'm Chef Marcus Giuliano. I'm a chef on a mission. Today's mission is GMOs, article found in naturalsociety.com. It's called the top 10 worst GMOs for your, or for your GMO food lists. <clears throat> I'm not sure how many foods are actually GMO'd, but there are a lot that's growing and growing. And here are the top 10 most dangerous, the top 10 worst GMOs. Now I wanna state this ahead of time, or I wanna preface this with, a lot of people out there, especially students and so-called scientists and people in that field, in the science field, say, Marcus, you're against all GMOs. You know this and that. You're eating GMOs. We've always done GMOs and GMOs have been around 50 years, 100 years. This is what I want to explain first of all. That's called selective breeding. Genetically modified foods. You, so you're genetically modifying the food, the organism, right? So yeah, through selective breeding, you are genetically modifying. What I'm talking about is the stuff that's done in a laboratory where they're injecting and splicing into cells of the plant, where they're injecting things that normally wouldn't be there. So selective breeding, which they also call genetically modifying, to downplay the laboratory genetically modified foods, and this is common, oh, they just say, oh, it's been done for years. Why are you against it now? All of a sudden, you're not gonna... First of all, most of the food we eat is modified. It's selectively bred. It's modified to sit on a shelf longer, look prettier, travel more, um, but not really taste more. And sometimes, yeah, taste and do all that, but you always give something up, right? That's why these tomatoes that are in the grocery store most of the time are just terrible. They're like cardboard. Um, there's a lot of foods that are out there that just aren't, they just don't taste good. Lots of produce. It's just, it's, They've been so much crossbred that they're not there for true flavor because the true flavor comes with a shelf short, short shelf life and not such a pretty look. Like heirloom tomatoes, you really can't ship those that far. Um, they deteriorate, they look ugly, they get bruised very easily. They are bruised, they start out bruised, they're not perfectly colored, but they taste fantastic. So, GMOs versus, uh, versus um Selective breeding, two totally, two totally different things that I'm talking about here, people. So here we're talking about the laboratory stuff, and here we go. Let's jump into this. Uh, let's see. What is this article saying? Genetically modified foods have been shown to cause harm to humans, animals, and the environment. And despite growing opposition, more and more foods continue to be genetically altered. It is important to note that steering clear of these foods completely may be difficult, and you should merely try to find other resources than your big grocer to. Uh, if produce is certified USC organic, it's non-GMO by default, or it's supposed to be non-GMO. Um, also seek out local farmer's markets at boo uh, and booths at farmer's market where you can ensure that the crops aren't GMO'd. Even better, if you are so inclined, start organic, start your own organic garden and grow yourself. Now, I've been so opposed to this in 1998, 1999. I would stand in Denver, Colorado, at the Cherry Hill uh, Farmer's Market, having people sign petitions to label our food. In 1998, people, 1999, I was out there. I was one of the first chefs out there making a stance against this. We were out there getting getting people to sign, and it was amazing. Back then, people were like, oh, I don't care about that, and certain people were, but it was an organic market, right? So the people walking into this green organic market should have been very conscious. But not much has changed since back then, yeah. I mean, there's just so much... There's so much information that Monsanto and the industry is putting out there to trick you. And one of those things is that your food's been genetically modified for 100 years, which is totally false. It's selectively bred. Two totally different things. Uh, same, same premise. I can see where they're twisting it, but I'm talking about the stuff that's injected, where your stuff's being injected. So let's jump in. Number one, corn. The most prominent GMO food, uh, avoiding corn is a no-brainer. If you've watched any food documentary, you know corn is highly modified. As many as half of all U.S. farms growing corn corn for Monsanto are genetically modified corn. As much of it is intended for the human consumption, Monsanto's GMO corn has been tied to numerous health issues, including weight gain and organ disruption. First of all, there's no long-term studies on the, on the effects, the downsides of GMOs. There are no long-term studies. Every study is short-term one year, two years, when they start doing it in rats, see the reason why they use rats to do studies is because they can produce generation after generation after generation very quickly. So in three, four years, you can actually see numerous generations of rats and see if there's any potential down the road. Well, they cut these these these, these off at like two years, 15 months, 12 months, whatever it is. Monsanto knows the sweet point to where 
there's a problem and where there's not a problem, that's how they, they, they do their so-called testing. But as far as human testing, or human what's happening to humans, there's no long-term studies, people. There's, there's, this is a total game of roulette. This is total, um, it's scary. It's 100% sca scary what they're putting in our food without labeling it. Uh, s number two, soy. Found in tofu, vegetarian products, soybean oil, soy flour, and numerous other products, soy is also modified to resist herbicides. As of now, biotech giant Monsanto still has a tight grasp on the soybean market, with approximately 90% of soybeans being genetically engineered to resist Monsanto's herbicide Roundup. In a single year, 2006, there were 9.96 million pounds of glyphosate, glyphosate sprayed on soybeans alone. So you go to the store, you see Roundup, Roundup, they say is a safe enzyme. It's not a safe enzyme. There's study after study that prove that stuff is not safe. You don't want you don't want your. I've never allowed my son to touch touch Roundup, even when he does lawns for other people. Don't spray it because it's it's linked to reproductive disorders in, in in men. So I don't want my son out there spraying this stuff like crazy and getting on him. So when when he when he mows somebody else's yard or something, go oh, spray this. Say sorry, I, I won't. I, he can't spray that. Um, we can spray vinegar. We can burn it, or it can be. The old-fashioned way it can be picked. Um, so uh, this Roundup, they breed the crop to resist the Roundup spray. So now the farmer can douse 500 acres with Roundup all over everything. Just load up the field with Roundup. It kills everything on the field except for the crop like soy or corn or whatever it is around up ready it doesn't kill that so that's bred to actually fight it and win now what happens when that corn or soy or whatever that crop is starts naturally selective breeding with wild things with noxious weeds or something what happens with that uh that could be a major 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 problem but of course again no long-term studies are done on our health on the environment it's just not out there Number three, sugar. According to Natural News, genetically modified sugar beets were introduced to the U.S. market in 2009. Like others, they've been modified by Monsanto to resist herbicides. Monsanto has even had the USDA and court-related issues with the planting of its sugar beets being ordered to remove seeds from the soil due to illegal approval. But it is approved and it's out there. Aspartame is a toxic additive used in numerous food products and should be avoided for numerous reasons, including the fact that it is also created with genetically modified bacteria. Number five, papayas. This is this may come as a surprise to all of you tropical fruit lovers. GMO papayas have been grown in Hawaii for consumption since 1999. Though they can't be sold to other countries in the European Union, they are welcome arms in USA and Canada. That's right. A lot of other countries will not take our food. They don't want our genetically modified foods. Monsanto's not welcome there. Our crops are not welcome in other countries. But again, in the U.S., it's business as usual. Monsanto lobbies. And if you heard Obama before he got elected, we're going to label GMOs for his, before his first term. We're going to label GMOs. We're going to do this, you know, this and that. And then he appoints Michael Taylor to head up the USDA or FDA, whatever, whoever, what he ever had it's up. He's from Monsanto, people. He's there to protect the hen house. Okay, this is a whole big scam. Monsanto has so much money in lobbying, it's insane. And their so-called science that they produce to make, and their, all these websites that they put out there that it seems like some kind of watchdog or some organization to, to promote it and say how safe it is, it's all part of their propaganda, people. Number six, canola. One of the most chemically altered foods in the U.S. diet Canola is obtained from rapeseed through a series of chemical actions. Um, canola is modified. The way you make canola oil, typically, if you don't buy the good stuff, is you're going to use hexane gas to extract it. Hexane gas is nasty. It's a petroleum solvent, and it's going in your food. It's going in your oil. Number seven, cotton. Found in cotton oil, cotton originating in India, China, and partic uh, in particular has serious risks. Risks. First of all, people, the cotton seed is the liver of the plant. Cotton is very, very sprayed anyway, even if it's non, even if it's non, non GMO cotton. It is doused with all kinds of funky chemicals, and that all gets concentrated in the actual cotton seed. Okay, and then what do they use for the cotton oil? They use cotton seed for the cotton seed oil. And that's what goes in the cheap fryers and the french fries. When you get stuff that's commercially fried in a manufacturing plant, 
you know, French fries, then you take them to the restaurant and you recook them. It, they're getting done in cottonseed oil, people, or canola oil, the cheapest oils out there, loaded with hexane gas, loaded with chemicals. Um, just, you think, oh, well, fried foods is bad for you because they're high in calories. Fried foods are so much worse for you than you can even possibly imagine, especially with the cheap oil that's being used. Number eight, dairy. Your dairy products may contain growth hormones since many as since as much as one-fifth of all dairy cows in America have been pumped with these hormones. In fact, Monsanto's health hazards, health hazardous bovine growth hormone has been banned in 27 countries, but is still approved for US cows. If you drink milk, buy organic. If you consume cheese, buy organic. Number nine and 10, zucchini and yellow squash. Closely related, these two squash varieties are modified to resist viruses. The dangers of some of these foods are well known. Uh, the BT toxin being used in corn, for example, has been recently detected in the blood of pregnant women and their babies. But perhaps more frightening are the risks that are still unknown, because again, there's no long-term studies. Even these, while these foods should be on your GMO list to avoid, you can buy 100% organic to be the safest. With little regulation and safety tests performed by the companies doing the genetic modifications themselves, we have no way of knowing for certain what risks these lab-created foods pose to us. So a lot of people are going to say, well, Marcus, this is for the betterment of feeding the world, and this, I can't believe you're opposing this, this great technology. Do you know what I say to those people? I say, fine, if it's so great and it's bettering everything, just label it so I can choose not to better myself. Just label it so when I go buy food for people at my restaurant, I can make a choice based upon my beliefs and my passion on real food. So if it's so great, just label it so I know. And if it is so great, put a premium price tag on it because there's no premium price tag on it. This is, this is cheap and expensive food, people. Organic food is the food you want. That's the premium food. That's the pure food. That's the natural food. And I got to tell you, there's plenty. There's study after study. Go to Rodell. Look at look at the Rodell Institute. There's study after study. We are producing enough food in the world to, to feed our population. There is, no, there is no threat of running out of food. The way we're farming is killing our environment, and that's a threat. The way we farm through the U.S., through all our cattle and all of our hog farms through the Midwest and the dead zone it's creating in the Gulf of Mexico, that's a major risk. There's things that we're doing that are major risks. If we cleaned up and did organic and did things right and went to grass-fed and, and, you know, we could easily feed. In fact, in Russia, did you know in Russia that like 90% of the population is fed by farms of two, two or less acres? are the majority of the farms that feed like 90% of Russia. Sure, the big cities like Moscow are different, but all throughout 90% of the country, 90% of the people population in Russia are eating from farms from two or less acres. Their food's being produced from that. People, this is a reality. This can happen and this needs to happen and it is happening in certain parts of America. And besides, a lot of these people are just eating too much anyway. They don't need to overeat. And they don't need to eat all these processed, processed foods that take so much more food to make the outcome. If you're concerned about feeding the world, stop eating farmed salmon. It takes three pounds of wild caught fish to make one pound of salmon. It's a massive deficit. It's caught, it takes so many, so much grain to produce cattle. If you're concerned about all that, like do like the Chinese do. Eat rice for breakfast, koji. Eat rice, add some toppings to it. They eat rice for lunch, they add more toppings to it. But our idea of, I mean, on a small... First, on a small little like acre of rice, and not even an acre, they're so much smaller, these rice patties, produces a massive amount of rice, and they do it twice a year to get two, two full crops in of rice. It is amazing what you can produce doing rice. But the world does not eat, a lot of most of the world doesn't eat rice. Especially the US, we only eat burgers, hamburgers, we only eat french fries. You gotta grow all this canola crops. I'll take all this land to grow canola and cotton seeds cotton, to then to make the oil to fry the french fries. Why can't we just have a baked potato, people? Then you wouldn't have to have the oil to fry. What we're doing is so backwards, 100% backwards. Then these companies come out with, oh, you need to do genetically modified foods to save the world. No, we need to eat better, high quality food to save the world. We need to save our environment. We need to save our health. I'm Chef Marcus Giuliano. Thanks for watching. If you like my videos, please hit like, subscribe to my channel, and definitely pass it on.